how's it going? Welcome back to some more F1 23 and another part of our immersive driver career mode with uh, Alfa Romeo. Today we are back with the Canadian Grand Prix. Apologies uh, that we missed a day yesterday with this series. Um, I, I've had a, a promotion at work uh, recently. Um, I am a full-time teacher. I've had a promotion. Sorting things out has been the death of me this week. I am so tired so busy um and obviously these episodes do take about an hour to an hour and a half of of my evening um and then on top of all of that the editing and uh so it does take a while so i, I really appreciate the support on the series i'm sorry uh, there wasn't a video yesterday i physically did not have any time to do it uh, so we had the the cricket captain video as well instead late last night so yeah we're back today though and uh, fingers crossed it's going to be a good grand prix let's head to the powertrain department the team uh, went with the heads or the team went with the head of the powertrain department's plan but results weren't as expected it's uh, going to take some effort to fix it oh no well, that's not what we like to see, is it? Right. Uh, we have got low morale there. We've got plenty of upgrades in the pipeline. Uh, whether we can get any of them really done. Uh, 15th of June, to be fair. Uh, we should have three of the four upgrades done. So that should give us a nice little bit of performance. Possibly get us up to the Williams sort of standard. And then uh, maybe that blue major um, aerodynamic upgrade could get us much further up the grid more towards uh where Haas are and Haas are currently the fifth best team it's been amazing really how uh, spiky this graph has been uh red bull obviously have been leading the way ferrari and mercedes battling out for second aston martin have dropped off a bit but uh, they're still having a good season you know they are uh, fernando alonso in seventh and aston martin themselves in fourth place in the constructors but uh we're, you know, we're doing all right. We're holding our own in ninth place in the the, the driver's standing. So let's uh, keep going. Fingers crossed we can get them. There's our two green upgrades, and there's our yellow one there. Fabulous, fabulous. Be on the car ready for the next race weekend. That's what we love to see, folks. That's what we love to see. We've got a major green update going, a major blue update going as well. Unfortunately, it looks like other teams have been upgrading. McLaren are now the fifth fastest team. Um, Mercedes have maybe taken a little bit of a step towards Red Bull as well. But uh, the main thing is, you know, we're well ahead of Alpha Tauri. Uh, R&D believe they're on the verge of a major breakthrough and require your time. It would mean you're missing an, an important meeting. Um, with the chassis department, what should I tell them? R and D believe. That's not an easy accept. decision, but you handled it well. I have no idea whether that that was the right thing to do or not. We will we will be fine. Uh, the Pirelli hot laps, load of rubbish. I don't really know why they added or kept that in the game. Um, if I'm honest with you, uh, Alpine, look at them, eighth fastest at the moment. Haas are back up to fifth now. Uh, Ferrari have all of a sudden gone second and look how close they are to Red Bull this is a bonkers R&D race it's gonna be crazy let's head to uh, Canada we can see what uh, the sort of tree does the progress tree but that is absolutely bonkers I want to look at this oh wow <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Haas. They've, they've had an awesome job. Ferrari have had a massive upgrade. They're now really close to Red Bull. Aston Martin are getting up there as well. Uh, we've just been on a constant upward curve, but we cannot get above these midfield teams. McLaren and Haas are very much um, pushing for fifth. They're, they're the teams that are, are well up there. We might be fighting for sort of seventh with uh, Williams and co, but... Um, absolutely bonkers isn't it but uh, i'll see you guys for qualifying looks like it's going to be uh, another nice grand prix in terms of weather uh could mean it's, it's a tricky race like in in spain but um hopefully i have a plan for that
Welcome along then to qualifying for the Canadian Grand Prix. My favourite track, this one. I've always loved it uh, ever since F1 2006, which was uh, my first F1 game, funnily enough. And uh, here we are, now ready to rock and roll and get ourselves uh, get ourselves going with hopefully another Q3 appearance. Our pace has been okay this weekend so far. The car feels beautiful. Um, it's just, it's just not very fast. <laughs> um, but as we found in qualifying, we tend to get better and better as we head towards that ultimate pole lap. Um, and hopefully Lando Norris doesn't get in the way this time. So let's see how we get on. Well, should I take you on a lovely lap of this circuit de Gilles Villeneuve circuit here in Montreal? We'll see how we get on. Nice braking into turn one. You need to make sure that you get nice and slow into turn two. A little bit of oversteer possible through there. And I've found that you do slide when you get onto those marbles on the outside. So try and avoid them. Take that corner a little bit slow because you'll gain the time as you head through the remainder of the first sector. And now you finish the first sector. Get on the curbs. Get on the power early. DRS open. And you want to get as close as you can to this wall on the left-hand side. to give you a nice wide run into this next section. Little bit of a ride of the curbs. Avoid that curb on the right-hand side. And now it's full beans until you get to the most important corner on this racetrack. Tiny little look up there, but easy on the power. And now you're going to feel those benefits all the way through up to the final chicane where of course it's very very easy to get a track extension anything like that best way i find brake nice and late turn heavy into the corner flick it to the left drs open and that is a lap of canada that's a 112.0 and that was enough for fourth place at this point in time in qualifying but uh, that felt like a pretty good lap to be honest with you uh, considering we were commented in Martin Brundle style throughout that as well but you can see how much time you can gain through this first sector there isn't really uh, any tyre wear particularly in your first couple of laps so you might as well try and uh, improve on your secondary lap here and we have got a little bit of a toll from that car in front although you can see because we didn't get so far to the right we've had to break a little bit more narrow there and you can see we've now dropped a tenth of a second and actually because we don't have any ERS deployment that's why we are dropping time at this point but uh, okay, we we're going to come into the pits uh, I want to see what part of the car is uh, rough and it's a gearbox again that's our second gearbox of the season that's gone kaput I'll have to make sure that that is fixed for uh, the race but uh, good first lap, quite happy with that. Let's see where that takes us. Close as the, to the wall as we can, and we're now up to the line. A little bit of an improvement on our second run on uh, used tyres, and that gets us through to Q2 in 10th place. Very happy with that. Um, don't know about Valerie Bottas, he was fairly near the bottom. Uh, seemed to have... Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Bought us up into fifth position. Obviously a very good record of Canada. But go now in qualifying. Both Haas cars. That's a big surprise. Uh, Esteban Ocon, Logan Sargent and Nick De Vries. First lap before it even started because okay, we only got one lap of fuel overshot remaining. the chicane. So this is our second flying lap. This one will count, though, as long as we get this corner right. And, well, it's not great. Just lost it a little bit, and now we head up to the line. It's going to be in the 11s or 111.7, which is quicker than what we produced in Q1. But well, there you go. Eighth place for now. Let's see where it is come the end of the session. Going to have to go out again, I think. Proper run through the chicane, and this is going to take us up to the line and into the top 10. Lovely lap there at the end, and that takes us up into eighth place. And, well, for another Grand Prix, both Alfa Romeos are through. Uh, we do seem to have a decent qualifying car. I've always said that. Bottas there in tenth, and uh, we were just a, a two and a half tenths ahead of him 
in its place, obviously, on the brand new tyres. Going out in Q2, then Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri, Pierre Gasly, Alexander Albon, and Yugi Sonoda. Well, not often in life do you say something's perfect, but this has been the perfect lap, and it's a 110.5! Oh, ho, ho. that was unbelievable, and that is provisional pole position. I, I'm not sure whether that will be enough come the end of the session, but uh, okay, we've wow, only got one I mean, lap that, was, that was ridiculous. I'll have to show you that lap in full. We just hit every apex the way we wanted to. It just all felt very, very smooth. We've taken all of the fuel out of the car. And we've done it. We've taken provisional pole position. I mean, there's no way that this car's fast enough to win a Grand Prix, but uh, if we can snatch a pole today, that would be amazing. Oh, well, we just track extend there very slightly. We found a little bit of time, but uh, yeah, nothing will stop us from getting pole position now. We've already done enough. I want to see what this time would have been had we kept it on track. It was a millimeter out, it really was, but it is going to be our first pole position. In Formula 1, we fly around the final corner. That was also a track extension. But, uh, yeah, we couldn't beat that time. We matched it at the very least. But there you go. It's pole position for our driver. Very, very and that Alfa one. Romeo. Nice Come on, I'll see you back in the pits. Unbelievable. <laughs> How on earth did we get pole position With there? I have finished, no clue. It's time to remind ourselves once again of our top three. I mean, Charles the Leclerc captain, got very Leclerc close, didn't he? And Carlos Sainz. With qualifying complete, all that remains now is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. But it just shows you, if you hook it up and, you know, hit everything, don't lock up. You know, it's it's there. That was the absolute maximum that I could produce on this circuit in that car, in those conditions. You know, <laughs> and and I aced it. Um, so I got pole position, and that's just the way it is. Uh, obviously, I don't think we'll be able to hold on to that. We'll try our best in the Grand Prix. That's all we can do, I suppose. Here in Montreal, Lights Out is quickly approaching on this artificial island originally built for the World Fair in 1967. Now it's used for a World's Fair of a different kind, ever since Formula One first arrived here. We're back in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. If you want flat out racing, you've come to the right place this weekend as it's full throttle for 59% of this 2.7 mile circuit, peaking at around 210 miles per hour going into the final chicane. But that speed requires discipline and there are more than a few close walls here just waiting to punish drivers with a heavy right foot. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. The captain lines up on pole position, and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Hamilton, Verstappen, Perez, Fernando Alonso, Russell, Bottas, Stroll, Norris, Gasly, Albon, Sonoda, Magnussen, Ocon, Hulkenberg, Sargent, Oscar Piastri and Nick De Vries. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinkham. Why don't we kick off by discussing Max Verstappen? That was a great win in the last race, but can they keep that momentum going into this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs so it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. Well, here we go then. Um, it's going to be very interesting as a possible two stopper on the table. I don't think that that's going to be uh, the best strategy. 
what about if we were to go softs and mediums would that work as a strategy I, I, again I don't think so so I think we want to revert that strategy to how it was which is going to be a medium tyre start I'm, I'm thinking possibly let's swap those around let's get ourselves on the mediums later on in the Grand Prix um, take the pain at the start and, and see how we get on medium was a was a lovely race tire though so i'm looking forward to, to being back on that but a uh, little look at the setup if you guys are interested you can have a little look i know a few people have said um please can you show me your setup because you're doing so much better than me in my career mode i'm absolutely loving this i, I think the cars feel so good obviously uh, we're going to be leading the, the grid away from pole position okay how was that pull away You'll have a bit more grip than that on the start, but we need to warm the tyres properly now. Make sure you get some heat into the brakes as well. And I did uh, try and change my gearbox, but of course, Park Fermi, I completely forgot, uh, meant that if we were to... Um, if we were to change our gearbox, we'd have to start at the back of the grid. Now, what is good is the top four all start on hard tyres. So we shouldn't be swamped by Leclerc, Sainz and Hamilton, but Verstappen could well be the one to watch in this opening phase of the Grand Prix. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be almost impossible for us to, to win. It feels like Force India Spa 2009. Maybe we can get a podium, maybe we can get some good points, but... Uh, yeah, you know, we know our race pace has never been as good as our Conditions qualifying pace. At the and no really, it was a bit expected. of a freak lap that got us into this position. We, we were lapping nowhere near that before that run. Okay, we matched it on our second run, but we're not going to be pounding 10 fives into the, into the Grand Prix. So, just got to make sure that we're... In a good position of course our starts have been very good this year so that there, there is every chance i mean we're absolutely back in the pack up we're getting these tires as hot as we can we are trying to give ourselves the best possible chance of taking our first grand prix victory or at least enjoying our first lead lap in formula one what we don't want to do is embarrass ourselves and get overtaken from the start line so here we go we need an angle towards Lewis Hamilton or Charles Leclerc sorry damn it okay not the best placement there mate let's try and get a good launch as the race starts <sighs> so annoying. okay so that's the rest of the grid forming up now be patient and watch for those lights so here we go then, we're ready for the lights of our first ever Grand Prix on pole position and it's lights out, away we go and it's a beautiful getaway on these hard tyres and we managed to get in front of Charles Leclerc into turn one and we do lead this Canadian Grand Prix and these tyres are perfectly heated up. OK, we're monitoring some wear on the internal combustion engine, be aware that we're going to start to see a loss of power. Well, we don't want to hear that on a power circuit, but that's a terrific start to this Grand Prix. And as we fly through this first sector, we are in the lead of this Canadian Grand Prix. And it's a terrific getaway. And I would love to have seen that live. And we'll have to make sure that we watch the highlights at the end of the Grand Prix to see what sort of getaway that was, because that was fabulous. But now the hard work begins. We are leading through the first two sectors of this Grand Prix. And looks like Max Verstappen, championship leader, has been overtaken by his teammate Sergio Perez. We have got Carlos Sainz about 0.7 seconds behind us. If we can get out of the one second window, then that would be ideal we fly through the final corner and we have officially led our first lap in Formula 1 and that is the fastest lap of the race so far we will take that it's not often the race leader gets fastest lap but we absolutely did there and 
how long can we keep the quicker Ferraris behind? I said Ferrari would be a big threat this weekend after their upgrades, and that's certainly seeming to be the case. And as I say, you know, we have got some pace here. But we have got a bit of a wounded car now with the ICE feeling a bit of wear and the gearbox feeling a bit of wear as well. It won't be long before Carlos Sainz has got DRS and is troubling us into the chicane. But uh, for now, we're enjoying ourselves and we're leading this Grand Prix. Well, straight away, Carlos Sainz uses DRS to good effect. We're not going to battle him too hard, but he does slide out of that corner. Use a little bit of ERS. We could be battling for the lead here. OK, we lost the position. Try to keep focus. Well, we could try the old switcheroo here. And that's exactly what we try. Oh, we're going to have DRS here. And there it is, enabled. And we obviously get a double dose of DRS and we're going to be side by side. Oh, well, Carlos Sainz, very big mistake from him. Over the curbs he goes. And his, his uh, exit was compromised and now we're back into the lead of the Grand Prix and it's going to be Lewis Hamilton. That's up into thirds. He's past Charles Leclerc now. Side by side, him and the Monegasque driver. But uh, that was a nice little battle with Carlos Sainz, nice and clean. But we still lead this Grand Prix on to lap four now. Well, Carlos Sainz having a look round the outside and we have to take evasive action there. That would have been contact, but uh, we get warned. The track extending. We've got five cars within a second here. We're creating a bit of a trolley train. All about the Captain Goodspeed train. But surely we're going to get overtaken here. Carlos signs DRS. Oh, and well, it's Lewis Hamilton actually. Through goes Lewis Hamilton, and he's into the lead of this Grand Prix. And well, we locked the up a Mercedes little bit driver there. Mercedes just completed a pass for the lead. The Mercedes driver. <laughs> so Lewis Hamilton leads this Canadian Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz is in second. Can we stay within a second? I don't think so. I think we're actually very slow, which is what we expected. We knew that we wouldn't have the pace over a race distance to really compete with these guys, but we gave it our best for the first four laps. And now it's about just trying to hang on to as many points as we can. OK, clear. We've got yellow flags up behind. Max Verstappen tries to go around the outside. That's not going to work. It's not going to wash with me. We'll get a double dose of DRS. Looks like it was the Aston Martin that got all in a tangle. And there goes Max Verstappen through with DRS. That's uh, a good little manoeuvre there for him. And now Charles Leclerc is going to head through. Hamilton has just put in the fastest lap Sergio of the race Perez, so far. and we've got uh, oh, a little bit of contact there. Well, I think we're okay. Got away with it. More yellow flags up. We're down to sixth as it stands. And that's Fernando Alonso and our teammate Valtteri Bottas just behind. So, yeah, really not finding good pace at this phase of the Grand Prix. He joined me on lap 8 of this Grand Prix, about to finish lap 8 actually, and we're still within the DRS range of uh, Sergio Perez, which is quite impressive I think by this stage of the Grand Prix. We seem to be quicker in the slow speed corners, which is allowing us to, starting to create a gap. They're just starting to pull away from us now. Okay, so really we're leading our teammate by 1.8 seconds. 
you see straight away there you know on the power early and helps us out but there you go that's what's going to be our problem today there's so many places you can slightly track extend and you get in trouble for it and well one more of those and we will get a three second okay, penalty we're at some gearbox wear so try to keep the number of shifts to a minimum please well there goes Fernando Alonso finally lost DRS to Perez and Alonso makes it straight past I think we can still get past him though and wow we managed to go around the outside of him there that was a, a big move and we are through and hopefully we can keep pulling away from our gap to the current front is 2.1 seconds teammate Bottas and continue to hopefully get some decent points for the team Here comes Fernando Alonso, he goes round the outside and he is through. Green flag. We've got some yellow flags and it looks like it's one of the Mercedes cars. Okay, we want you to pit this lap, so push now, push. Oh, pitting this lap. Don't know what's happened there. It did look like uh, somebody had got in a kerfuffle, but no safety car. But we are coming into the pits this lap, popping on the medium tyres and well, we'll see where we get to with it. Just need to make sure that we are absolutely not going to go into the back of uh, Fernando Alonso as we head into the pit lane. It's been a good stint. I mean, obviously, we had fun at the front for a few laps, but it's absolutely flew by. Doing very well here. DRS enabled. And I am intrigued as to whether Fernando is going to come in. Yeah. Right, we're in. I was half considering coming in or doing an extra lap as there's a big unsafe release there really okay off we go. Back nearly, into the race. perfect nearly. job on the turn in there mate looks like a, a good, nice stop time we're happy with stop that, one. that now we need to come out in front of that mclaren up to speed now let's get some heat into those tires looks like we will and we are out in front of the McLaren that's absolutely what we wanted and needed and now much more grip on these medium tyres the final 13 laps of this Grand Prix oh wow we've got a mechanical failure what's happened What's happened? We've got a big engine failure. I don't know what happened there. I don't know what has failed, but we've had a big engine failure. After just coming into the pits, we were looking great. And you can see there, we're closing in on Fernando, but then just lose drive out of there. And we are out of the Canadian Grand Prix. That is a big, big disappointment. And our engine is in. has completely gone and we are out here in Canada that's a huge kick in the teeth for what would have been a very strong a points result drive and a great performance from the entire team to secure victory here in Canada so Natalie what do you think helped them deliver this result I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks.
And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. Carlos Sainz is having a great season, won in Monaco, now wins in Canada. Max Verstappen there in second, Hamilton finishes third. It's going to be an intense race for the title, I think. I really do believe that all three gentlemen on your screen there are in with a great chance of winning the title. I thought we were in with a great chance of some good points today, but uh, our first mechanical failure of the season... Let's see and, how the driver's standing. Uh, well, have what changed. a shame. Max Verstappen should be pleased with his performance, making gains at the top of the table. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Often, my go to would be a driver who's managed to pull off an especially impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Max Verstappen's solid, clean driving throughout the event. Let's move on to the constructors. No change in the top spot then, but with today's points, their hold on that lead is getting weaker. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. And there you have it then. Carlos Sainz wins the race ahead of Verstappen and Alonso uh, and Hamilton. Look where Alonso finished in the end, just ahead of Perez. We could have been right in that battle. We were, we were definitely going to get points, weren't we? And well, it's it's the way the cookie crumbles, and uh, we got to just take our medicine and move on but uh yeah looking at the driver's standings max verstappen is leading by quite a bit but i think there's still five drivers in with a shout of the title this season but uh i do want to see uh, that get away from the grid you can see how far back we were because of uh, how bs the game is sometimes but it was a good getaway it was actually a better initial getaway from Carlos Sainz, he almost jumped the the, ra the the race, you would say. Jumped the start. As soon as those lights went out, it was a quick reaction from Carlos Sainz. You can see our reaction on the right there, but we just hooked up beautifully after that second phase of the start. We were just away, and look at that. We had a clear run into turn one, and, uh, well, Carlos Sainz got past Charles Leclerc, and that is what turned out to be a very very important part of this race and well what a shame what a shame and uh, i want to see how far back the the sort of failure happened you know, we were going through this sector beautifully we had drs we broke into that corner fly flew around there and yep, there you go. Didn't even notice we had it until that corner. We never got informed by Mark, the engineer. And that was that. Well, there you go then. Uh, that's pretty much where we're going to leave it for this episode. If you have enjoyed that and somehow we lose some acclaim. Rubbish. Uh, then make sure you give it a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe for plenty more F1 videos. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.